mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. There's Savage now on second. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Normally, he's pretty reliable. Usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Play clock winding down. <laughs> Throwing on third down. It's Savage. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. They dial up the corner blitz that time, and it delivers to the tune of a nine-yard loss. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, they'll be disappointed with that effort. Brady now on first down. Finding time. Now he'll let it go deep left sideline. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time. And that'll bring up second down. That's going to frustrate the coaching staff a little bit as they dialed up the deep shot. But they weren't on the same page on that play. Heck, I don't think they were in the same book. I think he thought he was going to do something else. Ends up throwing it over the sidelines. Well incomplete. Brady again here on second and ten. And that one got tipped. Kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Throwing is Brady on third down. This is caught. It's Julian Edelman. A good pick up there, 26 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game, but one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe get... And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker. There he goes left side. And they will score a pick six for the Texans TD. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That's fielded in the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. And now out come the Patriots. And following the pick six, and they 
decent field position and throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Now Brady throwing on second down. To the left side and complete for Julian Edelman. 11 yards for number 11. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner. He got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Throwing on first down is Brady. He's going to look deep for Edelman. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Edelman, the intended receiver that time, and that'll bring up second down. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. You gotta give some credit there, able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Throwing now is Brady. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Brady got to have this one. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the linebacker, Brian Cushing. And he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You don't always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost. So. It does test the mental processes of a team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal... Now whistles blow, and the Patriots are going to take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. Seven yards to go on second down. Looking to throw it, hit nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's, look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. And hold everything here. This one is not over yet. They return it for the touchdown. They continue to fight, don't they? This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. And now the Texans are going to stop it as they signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So now a big spot for the Pats as they'll go for two. Brady's going to look to throw. And that one is caught. So they convert here and don't look now, but this one's back to a one-score game. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he is out of bounds here on the return. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. They have the lead, still a one possession game, but the defense got the stop. They've got the football now, just salted away, right? Exactly. That's all the defense is counting on from their offense. They did their job in a big way. You know they're over on the sidelines now starting to take their tape off. And, hey, we've done this thing. The offense has to put it away. And, and play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Now a 
Savage. His throw incomplete. It's always a good play when you're able to bat a ball away or down because if you actually tip it in the air, now the offense is getting a second shot at catching the football or another receiver may come along and grab it out of the air and turn it into a big play. So if you make a play on the ball, make sure it's knocked away or down. Otherwise, it could be some jeopardy. Now Savage. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Super Bowl 49 hero Malcolm Butler. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Here's Blunt. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Oftentimes, when you're not winning at the point of attack for an offensive line, maybe they're getting out physical spread things out a little bit, make it more of a one-on-one -on -one blocking scheme, then you don't have to win it physically. You just have to win it by position. That may open things up for your running backs. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. They come out here in the eye. Brady's going to sneak it, call it a gain of three, and they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. A big conversion on fourth down, but no timeouts left, so you got to go quick here. Ten yards still left on second down. Wait 20! Wait 20! He's back to throw. And he'll go out of bounds down inside the 15-yard line. 15 yards through the air and a first down. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. They'll look to throw. And he is across and in for the score. And now they can tie the game in the final stages with the extra point. Or they can go for two and go for the win. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That'll be taken in the end zone. And with time of factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. And now out comes Houston. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably great run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Savage. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to float this one deep right. That's caught inside the 20. A big-time play there for the Texans. 59 yards. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So now it's all up to the kicker, Nick Novak. Two seconds on the clock, this for the win. And it is good! 
He splits the uprights on the chip shot. And the Texans are going to win the football game.